Hey, Layla. I, of course, want to talk to you about being by Rachel. Okay. Okay. So, uh, which of your parents is of what race? Uh, well, my mom is Caucasian. She's blonde, blue eyes. Mm -hmm. My dad's half black and half Cherokee Indian. So I'm actually like multiracial. Yes. Where are they from? Um, from Michigan. My mother's family is originally from Canada. They're like French Canadian. Um, and their people are from France. Germany and then my dad's family is from the south um, my grandmother was um, born on a reservation oh, wow. uh, in North Carolina and then I don't know exactly where my grandfather on my dad's side was born but um, he's like dark-skinned and your parents met in Michigan yes in Pontiac okay do you have siblings your parents did not stay together, though, very long, correct? Mm -hmm. So do you have a relationship with your dad, your dad's not really. family? Not really. I haven't seen my dad in, like, 12 years. So. And how do you think that, or has it at all, affected your racial identity? Yeah, um, it definitely had an effect. Um, my mom was remarried when I was three to a white guy. Um, so, you know, everybody in my immediate family, uh, really close to me is white because my, my dad's parents passed away. Um, mm -hmm. one of them passed, my grandmother passed away when I was little and then my dad's father passed away, um, like 15 years ago. So, you know, it was always my mom's, my maternal family that was more in my life and, um, and so culturally, um, you know, I, I do feel like I had more of like a white upbringing mm -hmm. culturally. But at the same time, like my mom, she tried to like compensate for that. Mm -hmm. My mom's an artist and so she's like really liberal and she just loves ethnicity. Like she's one of those white girls that's really fair skinned that always wanted to have bigger lips. You know, <laughs> yeah. that came, you know, was around in the 70s during the big, like, pro African, mm -hmm. pro black movements and was really attracted to a lot of the messages of freedom and beauty and um, going against conventional ideas of what's beautiful and what's good. Um, so she's very with that. So, you know, she really gave me um, a really colorful kind of uh, eclectic upbringing. And we lived in Ann Arbor for a long time, and that's a more diverse area. Um, mm -hmm. There's diversity there because of the college. She would take me to, like, the Indian powwow at least every year, like the big one in Ann Arbor. You know, just, like, a lot of artistic things. So her friends um, were often, you know, they often had mixed kids, like, her friends might be any race, Filipino with black kids, or black, or white, or whatever. So, you know, around me when I was growing up, there were a lot of kids who were mixed, and there were a lot of kids um, who were um, just open and aware of culture. So my mom really tried to make me aware of my culture. But there's only so much that can be done, because at the end of the day, you're, it's still like who your family is, where you live, and those kind of like cultural activities, like they added to, you know, my perspective to give me an open mind, but there was still issues, you know, later on, so. Like what? Um, I didn't really notice the racial, like I wasn't really that aware of race in a negative way um, until maybe like junior high. Mm -hmm. And um, part of that had to do with the fact that I moved to California and, um, you know, moved a couple times. And one of the towns that I lived in was called Azusa. It was mainly a Mexican population in the town, um, not too big of a town. And um, kids in my school, they thought I was Mexican, I guess. They used to say my hair was blonde to them. <laughs> you know, they, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, and... So I always felt totally normal there. I never, you know, felt out of place racially at all. Um, my parents seemed more out of place because they were white than me, you know. Uh -huh. But then 
when I really started to notice, like, realize what, like, racism was, I guess I was, like, in seventh grade, I was at school, and like I said, my school was mainly Mexican kids, a few white kids, not too many black kids at all, and there was one kid who was black, his name was Randy, and I was standing there with a couple, couple other kids, and, and, you know, they're both, like, Mexican or whatever, so the one's like, oh, I hate that nigger, you know, and I'm like, hmm. <laughs> Do I say anything? Are they gonna hate me? If do they think I'm not black? Like I, they must not realize I'm black. Right. Right. And I never like encountered something like that. I just said nothing. I just you know. And that that was like a real eye opener there, um, because that made me start to feel like, wow, well, am I supposed to? pretend like sh that I'm not something well that same year um, a situation happened again in the same town so I was I was at the park watching a baseball game and one of my friends um, she she came up in a car I think she was like a year or two older than me and she had a boyfriend with a car okay? it's a big deal right <laughs> Very. and um, her boyfriend was black he had like really dark skin as a white girl and so she's like, can we go to your house and use your phone? So I'm like, sure. So we go over by my house. We drive over. We get out of the car, me and her. We leave him in the car. And when we come out, we're coming up to the car, and there's these three little, like, junior cholos on their bicycles, okay? Um, I don't know if anyone knows anything about California, but there's a lot of cholos. There's a lot of, like, gang oh. stuff. And cholos are just, like, me like, they're just, like, little Mexican gangsters, sort of. Like. Okay. So they will wear like black pants, like black dickies with a white shirt. And that's how you know. Yeah. That they look, they have like almost like a uniform on. Okay. So, and the hair is slicked back, you know, so you know where they look. So, um, and, and so the guy, the oldest one, he's like, are you girls with this nigger? And my friend's like, oh yeah, that's my boyfriend. You know, and I'm just like, okay, back it up. <laughs> you know, and in a minute, I didn't, again, I didn't say, hey, who you calling nigger or nothing like that, you know. And um, so they're arguing with this guy just because he's black and he's in their hood. He's in their town where there's not any black people. And so this is right in front of my house. So they're arguing with him and one of the cholos reaches in the car and, like, punches him in the face. So he jumps out of the car. Her boyfriend was, like, big as all three of them put together. He jumps out of the car, starts fighting in the street and everything oh. they end up stabbing him <gasps> in the stomach and riding off so that that you know that was like a big deal to me yeah um just you know just the whole like are you girls with this nigger okay like when you're biracial and you're like 12 <laughs> what do you you don't even know what to do you don't know what to think and that started like a whole slew of problems. Um, you know, the, the guy we went in, called 911, my dad came home, he was mad at me for calling the cops, and basically getting myself subpoenaed to court to testify against, like, gang members. Um, and he made me move, and he sent me away, and, you know, whatever, so I didn't have to go to court, and all this kind of stuff. But that just, you know, my parents were worried about it. You know, they were like, well, these are gangs, maybe they're gonna cut you or do something to you. Um, so, you know, that's when it really started, like, when I started to understand how serious it was about race and um, that my position as a biracial person was kind of tenuous um, in, mm -hmm. you know, depending on where I lived. Did you consider yourself simply biracial back then? Like, if someone had asked you, what are you, instead of assuming that you were Mexican? Uh -huh. What would you have said? Yeah, I've always considered myself, like, multiracial. Just because it feels completely unnatural for me to say that, like, now I could say I'm black, like, to other, I don't know, I could. But, like, it, if, especially then, it would feel, like, very unnatural to not say I was part white, at least when both my parents are white. Yeah. You know. And what has changed so that now you could see yourself saying black, even though it doesn't ring most true to you. Well, um, a huge part of it is, like, once I was in high school and as I started to grow up... Oh, I, had... I just want to tell everybody um, that we went to the same high school and the same college. <laughs> Coincidence. Birmingham, Sea <laughs> Hall. Woohoo! 
and Go Maple University Leafs. of Michigan Ann Arbor. <laughs> Go Wolf. Boys. Yeah, that's a better team. <laughs> <laughs> but I guess in high school is like when I started to like do my own thing and hang out with more black kids. Um, I would say like before that it was like mixed or it was whatever. But in high school, I changed high schools and. Um, and where did you find these black people to hang out with? Because I didn't have any. Oh, in California. <laughs> oh. I went to high school uh, back to California. And I went, to, like, okay. freshman year. And then I went back to Birmingham at the end of freshman year. Okay. So that's what happened. Gotcha. So once I got to high school in California, though, I went to a really big high school. And it was really kind of racially divided. <laughs> Our school was literally, <laughs> it was a brand new school, right? Huge. It was in the middle of nowhere, so... On the side, we had a horse pasture. On the front, we had a cow pasture. In the back, there was some other kind of crops where they would fertilize it with dead fish. Oh, and it was, the seagulls would come. Mm. And then on the <laughs> other side, we had a police station. So we're surrounded by shit and police. <laughs> and, you know, there was racial divisions. And so the black people all hung out together. The white people were just all over. I didn't really notice that many Asians, you know, and the Mexicans were, I don't know what they were doing, they were mixed in. So, it was the first time in my life where I was just hanging out with black people, ever. How did you gravitate that way? Okay, yeah, sad story, it's tragic. What happened was, um, so, be I guess because of, like, the moving and the stress, I started gaining weight, like, at 13, and I was, like, getting fat. It's not, it's not a good impression, you know, when you school. So I think what just happened was I was just really kind of withdrawn mm -hmm. and, like, upset. And so the easiest people to hang out with were the black people, is to say. But it was true. It was, you know, they were the most open to, like, whatever you can hang around us. Um, you know, so that's what happened. And I was kind of rebelling, so I was being kind of bad. Or whatever. So that's how I ended up kind of hanging out on that scene, and it was like, it was like totally new. So they were like, "Oh, you talk white. Oh, you do yeah, what this. was that oh, like? You, oh, you don't know Run DMC. You're not black. <laughs> oh, you don't know who made Snoop Dogg's original song. It was like Rick. You're not black. And you so know? how how did you? What was your response to all of that? Well, of course, you know I'm like 13, 14. I want to like be cool. Yeah. The boy I liked was black. You know, so I wanted to, like, learn more, be more, pretend if I had to, whatever. And it just happened. Like, it was just, like, whoever, you know, who I was hanging out. I was hanging out with a white girl, but then her friends were black. And that's just how it happened. Um, and at that time, it was, like, the early 90s, mid-90s. And, like, you know, gangster rap was, like, exploding. This is in L.A. It was really popular. And that's just direction that things went at first then I ended up moving to Birmingham Michigan where my school had eight black people and everybody else was white but um so yeah definitely and you know I didn't like that that whole time was like really confusing because even when I moved to like then I moved to Birmingham I was like I'm back in the white area and then the kids when I first came to the school they'd be like they knew I was from California and um, they'd be like, what's up, oh dog? Like all the white boys, hey, you know. Like, they weren't being mean about it. So it was like, okay, I guess maybe I can identify like that. Because they weren't being mean. At least they were talking to me, you know. Mm -hmm. And of course I had like a little issue because I was like a little overweight and everything. So I was like kind of having issues. So, um, so it just became this back and forth of like, okay, who am I today? Who am I tomorrow? Like defining myself became this big deal when it had never even crossed my mind before like my whole life even though like when I was younger I was hanging out with a really mixed group of people and it never was an issue or came up and now you know all of a sudden it's like this huge issue and it's like I don't know it just depends on what environment you're in it's like you're like this chameleon mm -hmm. it just depends on what environment you're in who you're gonna be that day um, and for a kid, it's really confusing.